Grace and peace, friends and family. Welcome to another conversation. My name is Joy, and I'm here to talk to you today about how the narcissist keeps you stuck. If it is your first time here, welcome and thank you for joining us. If any of the content that I share, anything that I say in this video resonates with you, press the like button. Let, let YouTube know how you feel about the video. Press the like button as well as leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you are not already. And if you are interested in receiving exclusive content from me, then I invite you to join the YouTube community by clicking the join button or getting the link that I'm going to attach to this video. So let's talk about this. How the narcissist keeps you stuck. One thing that I think is so fundamental about your recovery journey is actually gaining a, gaining a hold or grabbing a hold, should I say, of the truth. You have got to embrace the truth. And the truth is not easy. Come on, let's be honest with each other. It's not, it's not easy. When you realize that this person that you thought you loved, this person who you thought you were building a life with, that you were sharing your dreams and hopes, and you listen to them tell you stuff. And so you're feeding off each other and you're, you know, you're sharing and creating a story together, a life together, right? And you find out nothing is real. It's not easy. But you see, what you've got to remember is that the person you first met didn't exist. And this is the difficult truth that we have to embrace. The love bombing stage in a relationship with a narcissist, and I can't call it a relationship. Please understand that I use that term loosely. That entanglement, that's what it is. That entanglement thrives off the love bombing stage. This is why they have to hit you as hard as they do. Make you feel good, make you feel seen, make you feel heard, make you feel like this is it. I want you to remember that is intentional. You see, when you met them, they already knew who they were. In fact, they've been walking in who they are for decades before you. You're not their first victim and you will not be the last. And I wanna just say this while I'm here, is that the people that come after you, they don't get a better version of the narcissist. They just get the same torture that you went through. The same verbal abuse, emotional abuse, the same gang stalking, triangulation, all of the things that make narcissistic abuse abuse, all of those things, they get it. And I want you to bear in mind that the narcissist doesn't change. They don't change. They may mask up how they behave. They may give an appearance or an illusion of something being better than what it is, but fundamentally they do not change. The only thing that is going to happen is that evil will mature. They get worse with time. That's what the new person is going to get. And there's nothing for you to be envious of. There's nothing for you to feel like you're missing out on. And there's your life wasn't going anywhere with this person. But now the relationship is over and you're stuck and you can't move forward. Here's the thing. From the, be from the very beginning, from the get-go, the narcissist had an advantage over you because they kept the truth. They kept the truth from you. The Bible tells us that, tr that the truth shall make us free. They kept the truth from you. By concealing the truth, they were able to paint a picture of a perfect life that they, they don't even know. They wrote a check that they don't have the ability to cash. It bounces every time. Those dreams were just dreams, lofty dreams. There was nothing there that the narc wanted to, to work towards establishing with you. So they keep you stuck by you trying to reason with your emotions on something that they did with you mentally. The picture that they painted, your, your sight saw that, your brain processed the stories that they were telling you. They, your brain processed the lies and even though you didn't know that it was the lie, you believed it, right? I did too, that's why I can speak on it. 
because I believed the lie too. But when I grasped onto the fact that, oh, okay, none of this was real. Listen, my heart was devastated. I was, I mean, it, it hurt. It cut so deep. But I knew that because this person lied to me and the way he played me, yo, <laughs> the magnitude of it was the, it was so disrespectful. And what you need to know, and you must understand this, that your only response to disrespect is to respect yourself at all costs. When we don't respect ourselves, right, we begin to we begin to buy into the lies of the enemy that we're not good enough, that this is all we deserve, that things will never get better and you are stuck in a situation. That is what the narcissist wants. They want you stuck holding on to the what they painted as the truth. Man, that was a whole lie. And what this does is it keeps you doubting yourself. And when you when you walk around in self-doubt continuously gaslighting yourself, you start to believe things that when the narcissist, well, it's not me, it's you. You are the problem. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't even have the things. You wouldn't have graduated med school if it was me as if they wrote the tests for you. They didn't. Oh, your business wouldn't thrive if it wasn't for me. Meanwhile, they've been stealing from your business. It's your ideas that support them. But here they're telling you, if, if it wasn't for me, who would want you? You're lucky that somebody like me would want you. The things that they tell you. And again, it messes with your mind. And so in your mind, you doubt yourself. You feel like this person was doing you a favor. There's no favor from a narcissist. It is just a, it's just a blank check of torture. That's all they have to give you. And what this does is when you begin to doubt yourself, it, came, it keeps you in a posture where you feel like you need to protect yourself. So you're hyper vigilant. You sometimes walk on eggshells to protect yourself. You begin to be in defensive mode or defense mode, trying to keep your name clean when that smear campaign hits that smear campaign is about your character it's character assassination they have got to get you down and they've got to get you down fast and hard so that they can control how other people see you but if you engage in this war you 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 you're being you're being pulled down by a pig into the mud and then you're rolling in the mud with the narc you're throwing your pearls to swine it is always going to be about the narcissist maintaining power and control over you. Always. They want dominion over your mind. They have got to gain that territory in your, in your mental faculties so that they can run it. They can think for you. They can make decisions for you. Tell you how to dress. Tell you where to work. Tell you where to go. Tell you how to talk. Tell you what you want essentially stripping you of your identity and when you don't know who you are and when you doubt who you are and you don't have any clear thought about that you begin to accept you accept the lie of the enemy your confidence diminishes no self-esteem or low self-esteem and then you begin to believe or begin to ask yourself, who would want me? And so you begin to fight for this dusty, this raggedy, dusty behind. Never deserved a second look from you in the first place. But now you're believing because of the, the mental gymnastics that you are lucky to have someone like that. Really? A whole walking disaster. And we say... The, I deserve this person. I need this person. I'm happy to have them in my life. No. They mess with you to keep you off kilter, to keep you off focus, to keep you from being or from experiencing clarity, whether it's emotionally, mentally, they block you financially, spiritually, just stripping you of your core and when they're able to do these things this is where we get stuck this is where you find yourself getting stuck in this entanglement and it's a demonic entanglement because all of everything that they do is the polar opposite of what god wants for you
You were never created to be a stepping stool on the enemy or for the enemy. You were never created to be a doormat. You were never created to be subjected to torment and, and abuse and, and just, just being stripped of your identity as a human. This is not what Christ came for. And I'm not saying that Christ came that we would just have these fantastic lives because life presents challenges and it's through the challenges that we experience the sovereignty and the providence of God. But that is not what narcissists do. There are several situations that we get to see God's providence, but abuse, God does not want you in that demonic entanglement. What happens in one way that people get stuck in these demonic entanglements is that you really just want to give your best and you want to show this person like, listen, I'm really a good person and I think you're misunderstanding who I am. So let me try harder. Listen, when somebody shows you, when somebody disrespects you, it's not your cue to amp up your efforts. It is the sign that you need to exit stage left and mind the business that pays you. Their mission is to rewire your mind. The narcissist wants to lock you in a situation that is going nowhere, like quicksand, going absolutely nowhere. And the effects of this emotional abuse really have the potential. They have, you know, narcissistic abuse really can keep you stuck for decades upon decades because of what has been planted in your mind. Listen, you have got to begin the process of planting positive seeds in you, in what you listen to, in what you read, in, in the thoughts that you have. Remember that you, you have to silence every contrary voice to the voice of God. And how do you do that if you don't know God's voice? Well, to know God's voice, you got to get into your word. You got to spend time in his presence. You got to spend time just listening to him, praising, praying. One thing about narcissistic abuse that it does and how people can get stuck is, or I guess one of the side effects, should I say, is that you no longer see yourself. You become invisible to yourself. And that's there's nothing honorable about that. That means that you live a mediocre life and you just accept anything that is subpar because you, have, you buy into the lies of the enemy that this is what you deserve. So there are many instances where people stop working out. I mean, that could have been your passion. You don't take care of yourself as far as your appearance is concerned because, well, why should I? You know, your joy in, in, in getting made up, your joy in your fresh cut and your, you know, your shape up and all of that is taken away. And it's the, you know, it's the very, it's, it's the small things because you see, when you look good, you feel good. The way you used to eat, how you used to take care of yourself, those things change. You lose passion, you lose focus, and you struggle to get those things back. But they come and they strip the joy from that, um, from you or from those things, you know, just by the devastating effects of the abuse. I want to encourage you to push through when you feel like, I don't want to do these things. Things that brought you joy, whether it was going to movies, watching movies at home, whether it was deck, whatever your whatever that thing for you is, that the narcissist changed or the abuse changed. Begin to take steps to start accomplishing things that bring you joy. Remember that you you didn't deserve what happened. Granted, we got into these relationships, we ignored red flags, and we've accepted accountability for that and responsibility, but we've got to focus forward. Focusing forward means making a decision to choose you each and every single day. Listen, fearless one, continue to come from behind and trust God the author and the finisher of your faith. God bless you.